But Jesus turns to Satan, to the devil, and says, Man does not live by grace. So the devil says, but I'm not going to give up. And so he takes Jesus to a high place. And he shows him all of the riches of the world. All of the kingdoms. And he turns to Jesus and he says, you know, if you worship me, all of this will be yours. You know, the other day I was driving home from work in my car. And I heard about the person who won 1.3 or 1.5 billion dollars. And I was driving along and I can show you that I was getting a little envious. And wish it was me who had bought that ticket. And then I heard and he decided to take the lump sum. Eight or nine hundred million dollars. And that really blew my mind. And I said, my goodness, if I would have had that ticket, I wouldn't be driving on my Honda Accord. <laughs> I probably would have faltered. For you see, we are human beings. We are human indeed. And it is difficult to be a Christian and to follow God's will. And then came the third temptation. He took Jesus up to the temple in Jerusalem to the highest point and he told Jesus, you know, if you really believe in God, if you really believe that God is good, if you really believe that God loves you so much, then jump. Jump. And the angels will catch you and they will bring you down to safety. And I guess this is the test. This is the last temptation that really demonstrates our humanness and our need for God's love and God's salvation. For you see, when Luke is talking about temptation, he's not talking about actions that you do. He's not talking about doing bad things. When Luke is talking about temptation, what he is talking about is the brokenness of relationships. When the devil tempts Jesus, he is not asking Jesus to do bad things. What he is asking Jesus to do is to break his relationship with God the Father. That's what temptation means. It means to break the relationship that God has created for you and for me. You know, the devil with that third temptation wants Jesus to test God. To test whether God is really present. And if God would save him. You know, we as human beings often ask the same, very same question that the devil has asked Jesus, but in a different way. We often ask ourselves, well, 
why do good things happen to uh, bad things happen to good people? Why do good people suffer when they come to church every Sunday? Why do we feel pain and suffering when we really believe in God? Why, oh Lord, did I suffer from cancer? If I think I am a good person, I come to church. Why are these things happening to us? Why do we feel pain and why do we become anxious? And why do we suffer? When we are here, My brothers and sisters in Christ's family of God, this is the devil again tempting us. This is the devil saying to you and to me, let's break relationships with this God, the God who is inflicting pain. And let pain be inflicted into each and every one of us. But just the same way that Jesus is truly human, and Jesus was able to stand against all of the temptations. A Jesus who was truly human and felt pain and hunger, just like you and just like me, who has the desires, just like you and just like me, stood up against the sin of temptation. And said to the devil, no, there is no way that I am going to break this perfect relationship that God has created between himself and me. I am not going to do anything to test my God. For I know that he loves me. And he loves me indeed. And nothing, nothing in all of creation, no pain, no suffering. None of the things that we go through in our life 